Welcome everyone to Community Conversations regarding the 2020 Census. I am here with Councilman Christopher Dare from Sparks. And we're thrilled to have him every week talking about the 2020 Census. And Councilman, if you'd introduce our guests. Yes, for sure. Uh, I'm excited to have J.D. Klippenstein with us here. And he's from, he's the Executive Director of Action. And we actually go way back with some uh, definite mutual friends and different yeah. things in the churches and stuff. And then Maria Polito, and she's a community organization uh, leader for the Action Group. So welcome, glad you're here. Uh, we, we're here to try to do our best to talk about the census, keep it in front of everybody, but also talk to people on how it works, why it works, and really how it affects you, and then how it affects our whole community. I'm one of the belief whether you might think some of these things we talk about doesn't affect you personally. I think we all affect each other. Mm -hmm. you know, no matter what you do, how you function, especially when it comes to census, because it affects so many different areas. So for a moment, uh, go ahead and dive in. Uh, first of all, I mean, how, how does this affect you guys and what you, yeah. what you think? Well, I'll talk about some broad strokes about how the um, census impacts the work that Action does in the communities we work with. So we do civic engagement and advocacy work, primarily with uh, low-income um, communities as well as uh, faith communities. And in particular, what really got us thinking about it was, one, the impact that it has on federal funding for housing on the Section 8 program. We've been doing a lot of work around affordable housing, and the census definitely has an impact on how some of that, that money is allocated to the state and to um, the programs that we can that folks use to access housing in our community. And then also um, our deep concern about the fear that many in the immigrant community have about completing the census because of um, the rhetoric that's been surrounding it over the past year or so. So uh, we uh, wanted to make sure that the right information was getting out and that uh, you know the right the trusted messenger trusted messengers were being engaged. So that's why I'm really excited for our community organizer Maria to join us because she's really kind of leading that work, particularly in the, the Latinx community and other immigrant communities um, here in Reno and Sparks. Oh, will you give us a little insight? So you say you've been doing work on this. What does that, what does that look like? What? So a lot of the work that we've been doing so far is just getting information out to people, um, kind of. So the census has been really politicized, and um, some of the things that we've been doing is just getting information to people and um, kind of debunking some of the things that, that have been put out there. Um, like that you need to have status to complete the census. And so we want to just get um, that inf the misinformation um, cleared up. And so going to communities and um, clearing that information up, whether it's going to mass or safe places where people are already gathered, um, and meeting some of those undercounted communities where they already are at. Um, in 2010, there were 2.2 children who were not counted, 3.7 million black people who were not counted, and 3.8 um, Latinx people who were not counted. So we are trying to, and overall Washington County had a pretty good turnout, but there were pockets of people who were not um, counted, and we're trying to make sure that those undercounted communities really are represented. And I want to remind people at large, so there is uh, so many billions of dollars truly at stake, and what's going to happen is that money will go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, if we if we don't get our count, then we'll go back and get it back. It just means another state's going to get it. Mm -hmm. So whatever state, this is like a really great <laughs> race. It's yeah. a state race, man. Everyone's like, woo, yeah. going after it. So if, if, if for whatever reason we miss uh, any population, mm -hmm. and then let's say California, Oregon, whatever, whatever state you want to think about, and they do a better job, they get money that should be ours. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, we don't want that. I mean, we know the needs that we have and what needs to happen. Maria, have you um, been able to communicate with your constituents how important the census is and what that money can do for our community? Yeah, so we already started this past weekend. We were at uh, St. Thomas, uh, the cathedral downtown, and so we've already started some of that communication. And we were able to receive a grant to um, buy some technology, because this year it's going to be online or by phone. Um, so we were already able to get some of that communication started. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I think the goal actually would, um, is a season of a lot of really uh, awareness raising and outreach for Maria, followed by when once the mailers start going out, we'll have events at congregations after um, you know mass or after other other sure. community things happening. Well, we'll have computers and and the ability for folks to just directly 
respond to the census there just as a way to encourage them to do it. Yeah, I think the more accessible it is, and obviously being online or answering your door mm -hmm. or coming to a safe place where you can take the census, I think all that will make such a big difference for this community. Mm -hmm. Great, and we're being really intentional about the communities that we're trying to um, go into. So. Uh, especially Latinx communities who have a fear of people showing up to their door. We're yes. trying to um, come to these communities first so that they we can avoid numerators coming to their door. Absolutely. And I'd say too, if you're a faith-based, this is where faith-based actually gets to really be a big help. One is the more they understand what's happening, the more they can help communicate it. So I know JD's worked quite a bit. I, myself as a pastor, I've worked with the faith community and continue to do so as well. Mm -hmm. And, and what happens is, and it's not just that they trust us, and, and that's good, but you also need to be wise with that. Mm -hmm. So we're not just saying, hey, use the relationship you have to go get some message out. We're asking you to understand it. Mm -hmm. So it's important that people know that. Uh, if you don't understand it, you need to get a hold of us and make sure you do. So you, you know that uh, people don't have to answer every question. That's the other thing that's real important. It, that There's just very few things they have to have. You know, if someone's uncomfortable with a question, don't answer it. They, just get, they really just need a resident and a name is the main thing they have to have. The rest of the stuff helps. It does help with some other things, but it's not the main kick. So we just, you know, so, so as you go with this, we're not just saying, hey, follow us blindly. Just do, you know, we just need your help to get this out. The better you understand things, you know, the better it is. So I'd say if you are a faith leader or you're in any of these populations we're talking about, you know, get a hold of uh, of JD, Maria, or, or us, and and, and we want to we want to help you uh, be able to you know help me help you. I don't know what's that movie is. <laughs> we want we want to make a difference, and we want to make sure that by the time this is over, that we have the best. I'd also say for a moment, will you talk about the housing, mm -hmm. how this helps housing, and I I can speak into it too. But I do know this is crucial for us. We are going through a time in our region where housing is difficult. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think, one, that the larger point that, uh, that I think is worth pointing out is just the immense amount of growth that our yeah. state has experienced, both, um, I think here in uh, Reno Sparks, really acutely over the last four or five years, but Las Vegas has experienced that exponentially as well. So another reason why this census is so important is we need 2010 numbers are not going to be anything close to what the 2020 Absolutely. numbers are. So much has happened. Yeah, exactly. there's been so, so much, much growth, growth and change. So I, it, I think it's maybe it's it's easy to underestimate that or just to kind of skim by. But it is I think really significant when you realize the last major count was 10 years ago. We can think about all the change that's happened in the last 10 years. And I think housing is the perfect example of the way the growth that's impacted um, a lot of folks either trying to buy a home, those homes are out of reach or trying to find an affordable apartment. Just there's a supply and demand. There's a huge shortage already in Washoe County. And the resources that the federal government has to incentivize the development of affordable housing or um, to provide direct subsidy to folks to help assist in their the rental payment, I think that the census is as a key part of uh, figuring out how much is actually allocated or how much is actually available to the state of Nevada. And like you said, the, 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 those resources are there. It's, it's more about if we are going to be able to, to access those as a state. And I also wanted to kind of uh, come back, um, not to get too preachy, but I think at the at the center of why we're trying to do the census work is this idea of the inherent um, dignity of all people, right? And uh, you know, I might use the language of the people created in the image of God, but this idea that everyone, in the most fundamental way, counts. Yes. And yes, and I think that there are unfortunately there's been a lot of communities um, that haven't been the, the Maria might want to talk about this a little bit more, but the census has been problematic, right? We we've, we've counted certain pop members of our community differently over the hundreds of years it's happened, right? African Americans were counted as three fifths of a person, mm -hmm. right? Native Americans weren't even in, counted, yeah. right? So so it's kind of so I think part of it is like it's a way of how do we as a community kind of use this opportunity to reaffirm who we are, make sure that everyone's counted, that um, our values are being represented, and that no matter who someone is or where they're from, that they that we see them and that they deserve to be included in our community. I think it's, so it's a kind of this, the dollars are extremely important, but there's also just this basic idea of what does it mean to be a good neighbor. It's somewhat of a symbolic um, event in terms of making sure that everyone matters and everyone counts and everyone is equal in the eyes of this community. Right. And that the dollars flow to those who need it and to issues that are in, incredibly critical in this community. So to have the experience of going through the census and preparing for it, I think is 
what these conversations are all about. The more people who see this video and realize that they have questions, there are places they can get them answered, and they can contact their faith-based leaders, they can contact their elected leaders, they can contact the Chamber of Commerce, and we want to do everything we can to ensure that every single person, child, teen, adult is counted, regardless of, of background, where they live, the community they live in, the house they live in, or the apartment they rent, or the tent they may sleep under. Yeah. It's all important. Absolutely. And I was I think um, Marie and I were debriefing a bit after her first you know, she was at mass all day on Sunday. And I, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about like some of the learning, especially engaging with, um, like after the Spanish speaking mass, just kind of some of what you're, you think some of the, the challenges you're gonna face in this outreach work. Um, it's interesting, so in English mass, a lot of people are like, oh, okay, the census, and are very aware of it, but it's, the narrative is a little different in Spanish, where people are like, okay, no, I don't, I don't participate, or like, oh, no, I can't do that. Um, it's just, it's different how culturally it's, it's acknowledged different. Um, so, and, and that's why we're there, to just kind of flip the narrative and, and switch that language up. Um, but it is interesting to see how it's very different in the two masses. See, and I'd say this, and, that, and I appreciate how you said that, is we, imagine us right now, if someone came in the room and said, how many people were in there? And they went, one, two, three, four, but the cameraman don't count. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd be like, well, no, strange. I'm a human, no, what, what? I'm here, and so part of it's not just responsibility as a neighbor, but I think personally, and I hope that people catch this, I would not be in a room and not be counted. Mm -hmm. I just, I, me personally, so I hope you know that you're valued, and whoever's watching this, or as you share, or, or talk to you, the people who work for you, and the people around you, I challenge them that there's no way I'd walk out of that room without being counted, because you matter, yeah. you valued, and, and and it does. And we all have different backgrounds, different lives, different different journeys we've been on, but it doesn't change the value that we have as a human being. Absolutely. And so that is that is a crucial element. So, was well, there anything else you just want to share before we're done? and get out there? I think it's important to share what won't be asked in the census. Um, social security numbers, bank or credit cards information, money or donations, or anything on behalf of political parties. Very Good important. news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm Ann Silver, CEO of the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce. We're pleased to offer these community conversations regarding the 2020 census and have important community leaders with us. And my thanks to Councilman Dare for being with us, as well as JD and Maria. Thank you all. Thanks for having us. Okay.